Hey, it's time for the audience to get to know us a little bit better. The time we throw open to questions from those who are gathered here to watch us broadcast. And who would have a question they'd like to start this, this is, session off uh, with? This is a feature that I don't cotton to particularly because uh, people oftentimes ask us embarrassing questions. So I hope today you'll ask us sensible questions, please. Okay, now... Uh, I have one that uh, you don't mind. Is there anyone uh, in the audience? I, uh... How about you? I have one, yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, when are you going to have the famous Eskimo Dog Act, Muck and Lux, famous Eskimo dogs on your show? Uh, I think they're great. I never heard of uh, heard of them, and even if I did, I doubt if we'd ever have them on a program of ours. I uh, just can't see an Eskimo Dog Act with Well, dogs. if you ever decide to, I'm Muck. You can get in touch with me if uh, you want to have the dogs on. I see. All right, sir. Ray, uh, continued uh, success in the entertainment field. I think that sissyish looking gentleman there has his hand up in the front row. How would you, you like a fat lip, buddy? That's your question, sir? Well, not originally. I switched it when you started that sissy stuff. Uh, well, no, I wouldn't like a fat lip. I, I didn't uh, get a good look at it. Okay, my uh, original question was, uh, what's your favorite food, Bob? Well, I suppose I'd have to say uh, the pizza pie that my wife makes is quite special. She uh, substitutes cream cheese for the mozzarella and orange marmalade for the tomato sauce and white toast for the crust, and it's great that way. Oh, you like a fat lip. Ray, uh, why don't you pick somebody out okay, there? Okay, let's see. Who shall we pick? Him, 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 me, 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 you, him, you, him. No, you, him. <laughs> no, you have, no, no, nobody with their hand up. Uh, uh. Go ahead, no, him. Uh, how, how about him? Him, no. him he's all right. Okay. Do you have a question, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, right now on television, they're showing a lot of uh, silent films. Was there ever a time when we had silent radio? Yes, uh, the period uh, immediately preceding the invention of the radio was silent. Does that answer your question? Not entirely. Uh, I thought it was a better question. I think it's better right now if I switch over to this other microphone, the one they say is funny. And uh, we have time for about one more question from someone in our group here. Uh, did you have one, sir? Quickly. Yes, I wanted to know if uh, either one of you... Either one of us. Uh, at any time. At any time, yes. Was an Eagle Scout. Was an Eagle Scout. I never was myself. Ray, how about you? Were you ever an Eagle Scout? No, I never was. No, he was Fortunately. That uh, solved the problem well, you for you? you didn't ask me. We didn't have time to ask you, ma'am. And this microphone definitely isn't the funny one, so I think we'd better go back inside. Why don't you use the other microphone? It's they have too a late puppier now. sound to them. I like them better. It's too late anyway now. Hmm. Welcome now to the new Day in the Sun feature of the Bob Ray program, a feature that gives ordinary people in dull, humdrum jobs their Day in the Sun. Chance to do what they've always wanted to do, and let's meet our first lucky guest, Miss Ima Goulding from Bismarck, North Dakota. You any... <laughs> what? Aren't we all out here on the same oh. No, I, Miss uh, Goulding, are you in any relation to Ray? Yes, I am. I, uh, he asked me to come on. You couldn't get any guests. Uh huh. Well, this happens. Uh, I gave you another name to use, too, you idiot. <laughs> you look a bit wan. Are you all right? <laughs> or, uh... Uh, I'm uh, <clears throat> always pale in the presence of celebrities. Well, thanks for putting us in that Thank category. You. Yeah, you've got a trained well. <clears throat> are there many celebrities to pale you uh, back in Bismarck? Uh, well, uh, hundreds of them. They all live around there. There's a big sign as you drive into town that says, Welcome to Bismarck, where the celebrities hang out a lot. I never, I never realized Bismarck was a, a mecca for show folk. Oh, not only show folk, but authors, painters, politicians. Now, uh, as I understand it, you are uh, you mix cement. Is that uh, your job back in Bismarck? Uh, I mix cement for the elbow prints in front of the Discovery the Pakistani Theater there. Bismarck. For the elbow prints. Can you tell us about those? I saw well, uh, I don't know if you remember them. Ray probably does. Old man, the scuffy. <clears throat> he buttonholes all the celebs that come to town and he gets their elbow prints on the sidewalk. 
Has this become dull for you? You've got bored with elbows, is that it? Uh, no, it's not the elbows so much, but the cement gets me down. Concrete mixing is strictly a man's job, I always say, and a frail person like me, I find it dull. Well, now it's and time awesome. for you to tell our listeners <laughs> what, you'd like, what you'd like to do here on your day in the sun. Well... <clears throat> All my life, I've wanted to be a lady trolley car conductor, Bob. Yeah? And drive one of those old trolleys down Main Street with the bell. Well, I'm afraid, uh, that's kind of out of... You mean you're afraid of that? You knew from my day in the Sun Letter that I sent in what I wanted to do. Yeah, well, we found I out I told that... you too, Ray. See, we only, only found out uh, that the one trolley line... Don't drag me in there. ...still around is just been condemned. So we tried to get in touch with you, but you're already on your way. Well, there's nothing else I'd want to do except maybe sue you for dragging me here uh -huh. in a wild goose chase. Well, we'll make some kind of a cash settlement, maybe half your expenses, and the Day in the Sun plaque, which goes to each of our guests. All right, lady, let's go. Uh, thanks, go. anyway, Miss Ima Goulding, our first guest on the new Day in the Sun series. Bye, Ima. Say hello to Neil. you probably recall that uh, here at the Bob and Ray show uh, not too long ago, we had Kent Lyle Birdley drop by, one of the great announcers of uh, past years, who has more or less uh, been retired, I guess, for a good many years. Hello, Ray. Hi. Yes, that's uh, right. I have been in semi-retirement for the past uh, 18 or 19 years. He has uh, uh, been spending his time mostly reading, uh, boning up, so to speak, on information. He's a uh, I guess a veritable walking encyclopedia. We thought that uh, he could fit in some somewhere in our show if we were to conduct a chatty type program. Like when we ran up against a sticky subject uh, where we didn't know too much about the subject, we could call on Lyle and he would be here. In other to words, uh, Kent would be uh, the knowledgeable announcer who, uh, if we can't think of the right word or the right phrase, uh, he has that information at his Well, finger. I'm happy to try, and it's quite the compliment that you paid me, Ray, to say that I would be, uh, have all of the information available that you might need. Kent, uh, Bob and I thought we would talk about deciduous trees and fir trees here as a uh, demonstration. Kind of a kickoff show. For and uh, just see how you could work, uh, work in, you know, uh, work out, so to speak, on the All show. right, Ray, well, you just go ahead until you get stuck, and I'll try right. to help you out. Uh, Bob, uh, I was reading recently where deciduous trees, uh, is a phrase, that phrase deciduous, uh, is not uh, thoroughly understood by a lot of people. I must confess I must be one of them. Uh, Kent, well, uh, I sure am, too. Uh, uh, you have any idea what uh, deciduous trees... Well, of would... course, uh, we uh, distinguish the two types, uh, deciduous from the evergreens, right? Your evergreens, your pines, your hemlocks, your uh, spruce. And your deciduous trees, whose leaves drop off in the uh, colder winter months. Your oaks, your elms, your maples, your walnuts. You sure? <laughs> that helps a great deal. Uh, couldn't we get a better subject, uh, that one that we might know a little about, so that we uh, wouldn't have to... Okay, let's see what else we could talk about. Uh, don't forget your conifers. What? Don't I said that. don't forget your conifers. We don't want to... Limit the uh, <clears throat> description of trees to just two types: the deciduous. Kent, uh, you the have uh, deciduous you have a, the... uh, a, a quality that uh, gets under my skin. Have you been drinking, uh, Kent? I uh, I don't all think all this all is all going all. to work out, Kent. If there's one thing I can't stand, is a know-it-all, and you're coming through now to me as a big bulbous bore. If you fellas need me, I'll be down at the corner. Kent Lyle Birdley attempting a comeback. That's not the way he's going to do it. We have with us today a rather unusual show business personage. Unusual in the sense that we've never had anyone who called himself one on our show before. Uh, he's known as Manny the Mime. Uh, tell me, uh, Manny, what's the difference between a... Mimist and a panto mimist. Well, a panto mimist is skilled in mimicry but does not use words, only gestures. From the Latin panto, to be out of breath, 
panting, too pooped to speak, and the Greek, mimer, pantomimer, a panting buffoon who mimics things. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereabouts in New Jersey are you from? Because Newark. your accent gives you away. Newark. Newark? Wonderful. In other words, uh, you're a mimic. No, a mime is a mimic with class. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I don't do Jimmy Cagney, Peter Laurie, and the mimicry of that ilk which, by its mere commonplaceness, has become a cliché. I can uh, imitate Walter Brennan. Would you consider that a cliché? Quite. And I hope you'll spare us that wonderful experience at this time. By way of returning the compliment, I'd like to say that you do as good an imitation of a stuffy person as I've ever heard, sir. Thank you. But to continue, it would seem to me, uh, by your alleged class act, that You'd entertain a lot of crowned heads as sort of a court jester, is that right? Well, the one time I tried my hand at court jestering, I was a dismal failure. I was up for speeding, and I tried softening the judge with a few of my comic mimes, but it didn't strike him too funny, and he threw the book at me. Well, judges are known for their dour main. You could prove it by me. If I ever do, I'll cite your case. Uh, Well, I'd rather you wouldn't. I've been touring the country without a driver's license, and any undue attention drawn toward me could cause the sudden cancellation of my schedule. So, let's have you now and your mime. Hello, Manny the Mime here. Have you ever noticed when you go to the movies, the picture has different actors in it? I'm sure all of us have. One of my favorites is Jimmy Stewart, and I'd like to mime him now. Hi, uh, I'm Jimmy Stewart, and it's uh, a great pleasure to be Uh, here today. Wait. I, I, I... Is that it? The highlight of your classy act? That's it, Ray. I hope you liked it. Like it? Not only was your imitation dreadful, but Jimmy Stewart is the tritest, most... Well, the most clichéest of all impersonations. It's the first one any mimic learns. Well, I hadn't realized it was being done. Does anyone else do Edward G. Robinson... Barry Fitzgerald, Arthur Godfrey? No, only 99 out of every 100 of them. Well, you've just put me right under a dark cloud. I'm sorry I ever came today. On the way out, mime a man leaving a radio studio with his tail between his legs. That should come easy for you, sir. Now it's time to uh, present another of our Bob and Ray family, and... Barry, it's been some time, some time, Barry, since we've had a chance to chat with you across these microphones, and, uh... Yes, you sound as bad as an imitator you had on your program once. Manny the Mime. Is that I the think one you so. met? Yeah. I yeah. think that was... I forget his name. I dismissed it immediately. He did Jimmy Stewart. You were trying to do that. Bing Crosby then, weren't you? Yes, yes. Well, let's do it. How the Rose Mary Clooney. No, we're... We're not here to do imitations. I wanted to hear about the... Fun. It's fun. I don't mind doing it. I've had a couple of laughs. All right. Well, Rosemary, what are you going to sing for us first for Bay? Well, I'd like to sing a little ditty. No, this is just wrong for us, Mary. All right. And you said you had a big plan of what that you got Bob, I'm delighted. I don't know how much time you have left right now, but I'd love to remind everybody that I'm rebuilding my inn up in oh, Maine. wonderful news. I knew it was something big, and I hardly hoped it would be this again. Well, yes, we hope to have it open uh, within eight to ten weeks. Wonderful. If that'll... the plumber can buy. He's been holding us up, the plumber. That'll be, well, they do that at times. It'll then be, we uh, have a, another fella out there trying to find a well with a dousing rod. Mm-hmm. He's holding us up. Tell us just whereabouts it is so folks can begin to make plans for a visit to Maine this uh, spring and summer and uh, stop in at Mary Magoon's Inn. Bob, it's located in Turhan Bay, oh, Maine. Beautiful country up there. It's lovely. A wonderful lovely. view of the ocean. We're changing the, the whole motif of it. Before it was an old New England type inn. Now it's changing. going to be more or less modern. Oh. We're going to have, uh, although the same, genuine home cooking. Oh, that's good. because that's But we're going to be more modern in our approach. Folks travel miles around for some of those Mary Magoon specialties that came out of your have kitchen. Have a slogan and see if you like it. Hmm? Mary Magoon, landmark. For those of you who might be hungry about now. I think that'll really catch on and... We'll uh, be right. following up with progress reports as the weeks go by. Oh, Thank you, Mary Magoon, for coming here to our Bob and Ray microphone. Thousands of companies across the land are known as government contractors, supplying the nation with everything from mess kits to missiles. Wally Ballou is visiting one of the more unusual companies. Come in, please. Wally Ballou. 
Lee Ballou, four-time winner of the Oxford Grammar Award for talking good on the radio, standing here with young Tommy Creaker, production chief of the Stripling Computer Company of Battle to Walk with Cubs. Tommy is proudly holding in his hand another fat government contract. Oh, God, you're ready. It's not as fat as the last one we got, though. Well, it looks pretty fat from here. I'd say about 150 pages of fine print. Jeepers, the last one was about 200 pages. But I guess being as they know it better, they could cut out a lot of legal phony baloney stuff about it. Yeah, uh, verbiage. Yeah. That's... Well, looking about me here, it's a scene of panoramic youth. Busily tending to the nation's needs. Well, uh, we're proud of being kids, Wally. Uh, we range in age from 8 to 16 years old. And upon our 17th birthday, it's automatic retirement bill for us. On a pension? Oh, no, it's an allowance. It's all 18 a week for life. I see. Well, what I wanted to ask you was, how did a bunch of kids manage to stare a large government contract? Well, uh, we were low bidders. Uh, on account, uh, we don't have to pay many salaries. And all the kids are co-owners. We're plucking all the profits into a big kitty to build their own amusement park. Well, that's a wonderful idea. What's it going to be called? Well, adult land. It's going to have all the things adults have. Excuse me a second. What is it, Barnaby? Uh, Jimmy Portnoy's mummy is on the phone, and she says Jimmy can't come to work today because he won't make his bed. Uh, well, tell her I'd like to talk to her. She says she wouldn't talk to you because you're a rotten kid. Yeah. Tell her I'll fire Jimmy so that he can stay home every day and nag her. I'll <laughs> get him here. Do you have much trouble with your help, Jimmy? We scrap a lot. Suppose it's bound to happen with a couple of hundred unsupervised children making high velocity digital computers. Hold it. We don't make high velocity digital computers. We make an advanced abacus that the Air Force uses in case they have a loss of electric power and have to figure something out. You folks hear that? The Abacus, ancient adding machine of the Orient, has been modernized by American youthhood. Tell us, uh, Jimmy, what's so advanced about your Abacus? What, the plural of Abacus is Abacus, is not Abacus, sir. Right. And uh, they're advanced Abacuses because seeds are in all kinds of pretty colors and shapes and like that. Better refinement of the old Abacus. Abacuses. Not Abacai's. This is Portnoy was right. You're a rotten kid, and with that, this is Wally Ballou. Don't you want to hear about our contract to make tiny gyroscopies to fit in the helmets of infantrymen who fall in Gyroscopes, it's gyroscopes. And now back to our main studio. Time now for another in the uh, series of Bob and Ray announcer school broadcasts with... Uh, Wally Ballou handling it today. I think the subject is interviews of celebrities, right? That's right, Bob. And uh, we have young Arthur Schrank here with us. Arthur, say hello to everybody. How do you do, everybody? It's a real pleasure to be here right now saying hello to you on these microphones. Wally Ballou, it's always a pleasure to appear opposite you, and I hope that the folks listening at well, home uh, will enjoy it as much as I Arthur, do. And I, know... I know that uh, somebody told you that you never should allow any dead air to creep into your broadcast, but... That's right, Wally. That was the first thing I realized many years ago, that dead air, sometimes people think the power is blown down, they change... Uh, well, you see, the way you talk... I've gone right along and try to maintain a constant pace. Try to keep your voice... Arthur, keep... you make people nervous because they don't hear you take any breath. You just keep uh, talking without the normal breaks. Well, I breath. have a very good control of my breathing, and that came back many years ago. You see, I used to be a professional balloon blower upper before they had the little gas gadgets, well, and that's why... I I can go on today and talk for 10 or 15 well, minutes. It's just making me terribly nervous breath. sitting here listening to you. And we did want to get to the uh, portion of the lesson which has to do with interviewing uh, celebrities. Wally, I understand that you're a great teacher, and I'm here to learn. That's why I want to sit and listen and to absorb everything you have to say. I know that if I'm going to go out and interview important people... All right, you... then. Uh, would somebody in the audience like to come up here and play the part of the mayor of the town? We'll do a sample interview, and I'll show you some of the tips I've picked up in 28 years of radio broadcasting. Would you like a lady mayor, or would that be tough? I don't see any gentleman with uh, his hand up ready to come up here, so... All right, we'll take you, ma'am. You be the mayor. Now, Arthur, I want you to listen to how I do this. A few tips before we start. Get out of my start. office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lady mayor with a sense of humor. Uh, the way we do this... I wasn't listening, Wally. Just what do you want me to ask the lady mayor now? Uh, first of all, uh, you got to remember that you never want to uh, repeat an answer that the lady gives you. You always want to have a question ready. Uh, I'll ask you a question, ma'am. I'll show you what I mean, Arthur. All right. Mrs. Mayor, or Mr. Mayor, uh... 
How do you think uh, that the uh, recent mean, local... Mr. Mayor? Well, I'm just calling you that, lady, so we can show this demonstration to Arthur. All right, Miss Ballou, go right ahead. This is Mayor. Uh, how do you feel the uh, results... Mrs. You hit it. This oh. is Edgar F. Mayor. Oh, you are Mrs. Mayor, then? I am, yes. And yes. Uh, are you having a good time here at the program? I'm having a lovely time. Having a lovely time. Wonderful. Well, that's a sample, Arthur. Uh, would you like to take over and try it a little bit yourself, or do you think you want a little more Okay, practice? that'll be fine. Uh, Miss Mayor, I want to ask you a few questions. Before you do, I'd like you to grab hold of your desktop, because I think these are very, very serious questions, and questions that I think you've been avoiding for a long, long time. Take a breath, Arthur. Take a breath. Well, I can't crazy. stand it. I'm, uh, I can't stand him. He'll never make out. Well, it's never. too late now anyway, uh, Wally. Our time is up, but uh, maybe you can prepare a lesson Well, how next about week. sports? Maybe that's where I belong. Up there on the broadcasting booth high above, a cheering throng. Right, maybe that's it. What's going on down below. Maybe I mean, that's it, there, Arthur. Maybe I should take up sports. All right. right. Friends, this is... Drop back again next week, will you? All right. Well, I guess it's time to take our portable microphone and step off the great stage here, <clears throat> down into our studio audience. Let's see who we'll choose for our first chat. Jim, uh, me. Yo, oh, I, I, no, I, I, I talked to you I'm last not week. Me. Him, me. him, me. him, uh, him, uh, him, me. him, me. him, 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 with a group of uh, conventioners, I tell by that button on your lapel. That's right. <laughs> you are a calendar maker? We're a group of calendar manufacturers, uh, Bob, and we get together every year uh, just after uh, we uh, make our deliveries. And uh, it's all over. I mean, the year is up and the uh, new calendars are being used. Uh, uh, what we do now is sit down and do go over our list of pictures and set scenes uh, what, uh, for next year's back. Of course, you work way ahead. I suppose already you've got next year's pretty well planned out. Will there be anything new that we can look forward to in calendars next year? I mean, the dates are going to be pretty much the same. Uh, yes, I about think... The uh, be about the only thing that could change, right? Uh, uh, no, there, uh, we have uh, more or less uh, stuck to a set uh, pattern on our pictures. Uh uh, we uh, will employ uh, fall scenes with uh, co uh, covered bridges in uh, in New England. Uh, who, uh, we who, would, well, who would go for that now, for instance? Well, I mean, uh, oddly enough, a funeral director might like that. Uh-huh. And uh, an insurance uh, man might like that. Yes. Uh, then we have uh, uh, just uh, uh, scenes of water in the ship. We've discovered that... Uh, a sea land seascape, I believe you artists fellows would call it. Uh, uh, a marine a landscape, we call it. But with an old, old ship. Yes. Schooner type. Galleon. Uh, what's that? A galleon. Mr. Galleon, you want to come up and No, no, I meant a, 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 a ship. Oh, a yes. Galleon. Well, Mr. Galleon, uh, oddly enough, yeah. is vice president of our organization. Is that so? Well, maybe I should have uh, talked to him instead of you. Uh, you're the uh, circulation manager, I guess. Uh, that's right. Now, uh, uh, we have discovered, of course, four garages, you're pretty women, pretty girls. Oh, yes. Well, that is... You're Polka Trude. We'll still be You're what? You're Polka Trude. Uh, you're Polka Trude, I think. Trude. Yes, Trude. So the lady is right. Polka Trude. That's all? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, they'll be there, uh... Uh, at the garages uh, this year as they were last year, over and back of the spark plug cleaner. <laughs> well, uh, it'll be interesting to now that we've talked to you to see some of uh, your handiwork in the way of uh, calendars. And uh, as long as you can't tell us anything particularly more interesting about it, I wonder if Mr. Gallion could add anything. Mr. Gallion, has uh, your man covered the situation? It's covered. Uh, oh, I see. Right. Okay, Ray, take it away back there on Look, the big well, stage. Could, uh, he's covered the planning. He's covered it. He left out uh, something, but he covered it. In... Another of uh, life's embarrassing little moments coming to life now as we stop in at a neighborhood supermarket. So, Val, uh, what's new, anyway? Oh, not so much, friend. I just figured I'd get the shopping done, get home early. How's, uh, how's the message? Oh, thing? great. How's yours? Oh, great. Uh, see, you painted your house the other day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got that all fixed up. Well, I'm lucky in that respect. I have, uh, you know, so much stone and all. I, I just know have you trim do. to do and all. 
Yeah, well, I remember when you did it. Yeah. I helped you out there last summer when you did it. Yeah, you're, uh, you're working uh, overtime, too, aren't you here? Mm. I see your car yeah. coming home late at night. That's yeah, crazy, busy, crazy. busy. Hey, I was uh, thinking say, we ought to... Uh, Friday oh, night, no, excuse me, Friday night, uh, Bertha uh, wanted to know if, uh, if you and Madge could come over. Well, uh, I think so. Nothing important, I think. Uh, come over and uh, we'll shoot the breeze. Sure, I'd huh? like to, and uh, I'll ask Madge just as soon as I get home, I'm Look, sure. come any time after seven, as soon as the kids are all in right. bed, you know? You know, we were talking about the other day is maybe we can uh, take that... Uh, summer vacation place we had last year, you know, the cottage for the four See if we could get it again, wouldn't that be great? Oh, wonderful spot. Yeah, the kids had a wonderful time. A wonderful time. Hey, didn't yep. realize what time it was. I got a uh, check for twelve fifty. I'd like to cash in, Fred. Okay, okay. personal? Yeah. Okay. See, that's over $10, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't realize it was so late, actually. I... Hold it just a Attention, please. Attention, please. This is checkout area three. We have a person who says his name is Malcolm E. Fledge. Oh, well, That's hey. the signature hey, on a Fred. personal check for $12.50. Hey, hey Fred, We Fred. would like two witnesses. Oh, Two Fred. witnesses. Would you come look at the person at checkout three hey, wearing Fred. a dark coat, gray hat, and unshined oh. brown shoes? Mm. He mm. stands about 5'10", blue eyes, weighs about 185 pounds. Hey, uh, Fred. About 5'11". Would you please come to checkout area three? He wants to cash a check for twelve dollars and fifty cents. cents. Fred, what'd you have to do? You've Thank known me you. for fifteen years. What's all this? Jeez, Clam up, quick. buddy. It's over ten fish, isn't it? Well, sure, it's twelve oh. fifty, but wow, this is kind of embarrassing. I don't see anyone coming around. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll. Uh... Well, look, can I call the boss? Uh, have him uh, verify it, or uh, I can't go to the boss and tell him. That I have a fellow. I know, but don't you don't care. Let me finish. Okay. I can't go and say I have a fellow here who wants to check cash for twelve fifty. There is a regulation. But you have rules. I know. I know you have rules. I, I tell see. you what, Fred. Can you lend me twelve dollars and fifty cents? Attention, please. Attention, please. He's back down now. He doesn't want the personal check cash. Oh, Try to wait. borrow twelve dollars and fifty cents from me. Look, you know we do I'm not good, need Fred. witnesses. We do not need witnesses. He is borrowing the money from me. Hmm. Well, can I have it? Sure. Here you are. Oh, thanks a lot. I'll see you Friday then. Right. Say hello to Bert. Okay. Or Madge. you of. Certainly boats and water and lighthouses. Here on page 12 of Bob and Ray's personality sketchbook, we're writing in the name of Captain Caleb Fremont, an old grizzled lighthouse keeper who is uh, here at our microphones now to answer a few questions about lighthouse keeping. Well, thank you, Ray and Bob, and I just like to say that that sound really does kind of make me nostalgic for the old house. Your lighthouse is some uh, mile and a half offshore, and uh, I wonder if you could tell us just how long you've lived at the lighthouse and how you overcome uh, ennui or boredom out there. Well, man and boy, actually, for some uh, 32 years. 32 years as man, about uh, 18 years as boy. boy. <laughs> Certainly by now, truly, a grizzled old uh, lighthouse Yes, paper. well, I've wound up those stairs a good many times and wound down the same way. Mm. Do you have any favorite, uh, by that I mean, do you like the foghorn or the light better, or do you well, care one way or the other? Of course, it's a lonely existence uh, out there. I, actually, I'm one of the few remaining uh, manually operated houses. Uh, lately, of course, uh, automation has come into the picture, and the lights are run uh, mechanically so that they don't require a man up there all the time. So uh, a fellow like you, a grizzled lighthouse keeper, is becoming a disappearing breed, so to speak. Extinct, almost. Yep. Uh, but it still uh, gives you pride to keep the light polished. And you ask me what I like best, I don't know. I think probably the sound of the foghorn itself on a foggy night. Well, uh, I imagine that has a nostalgic sound to you. Sending out its signal of safety to the mariners on the high seas. Captain Caleb Fremont. May not even be able to see the light Mm. as it turns round and round in the top of the lighthouse. Captain Caleb Fremont has raised a family uh, a mile and a half offshore 
And uh, by uh, a rowboat, I guess, you took the kids to school yes, in the morning. Yes, every and, day. Uh, brought them back home in the afternoon. And you've been there how many years again? Uh, uh, 32 and 18. Make it 50 years. <laughs> 50 years, certainly. A grizzled lighthouse keeper indeed. Well, Cap, uh, Captain, thank you for coming oh, by. I, I know this is you. your day off, isn't it? That's right, Ray. And uh, what are you going to do today? I'm going out and get grizzled, I guess. Right. Page 12 of Bob and Ray's personality sketchbook, Captain Caleb Fremont. Here with us, once again, after rather a uh, stormy last month, with uh, probably one of the biggest flops Broadway has ever seen, is Mr. Barry Campbell. Barry, you're planning a comeback. You've got uh, yourself lined up for a job, you told me, and that the reason we asked you to come on the on the air today and kind of fill us in. That's right. My movie has been a tremendous bomb. It was... Uh, I so took it closed a, that night, didn't it? The, when you... I we, took a... Uh, not so much myself, but my friends and relatives took such a financial bath, so to speak, that uh, we'll be years getting out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was another case of my misgauging what the public wants at a particular moment. I goofed. <laughs> Have you ever thought of giving up entertainment as a career in any form, uh, in, no. in going into something like insurance or... Well, uh, I had, uh, you know, that... How about the, the doctor uh, field or something like that? Well, I'm too old now to start into uh, school again, but I did, you recall, one summer have that uh, custard ice cream truck. Yes, well, that wasn't any more success than uh, evidently everything you touch kind of... Uh, Turns to... Uh, <laughs> kind of folds up in your hands. I'm turning to something now that uh, will be solid for me, will ensure me a steady... Income, which has probably been my biggest well, that's uh, we're trouble. Looking forward, I've had to... my my ups and downs and uh, my peaks and my valleys. Now, I, the missus was telling me to straighten out the peaks and valleys or get out altogether. I see. And you've just uh, taken a position as a Hollywood stunt man. Is that right? Well, a particular type, Bob. Uh, I'm specializing in falling downstairs. And uh... Uh-huh. well, our time is uh, running. <laughs> A little bit short. I understand you you have the padding on that uh, you wear under your clothes there. Well, I'm, help. I'm going out to Hollywood uh, uh, tomorrow. I'm, I'm playing the part of a uh, very wealthy banker who's loaded, mm-hmm. a stiff, that is, and he trips at the top of the stairs at his mansion. Falls the whole flight. Falls the whole thing. We have constructed a uh, set here. Okay, in the well, studio. I'll go on up. All right, uh, if you will, Barry. Tell me. I can't tell when to go, Bob, but uh, just yell. I'll tell you as soon All as right. I've uh, set the thing up. We have a flight of about... Uh, 22 steps, I believe. Uh, a good flight running the uh, height of a floor and a half. And Barry is going to uh, demonstrate his technique of falling down this flight, showing us how he'll be doing it in the movies. You'll be seeing him do it, although you won't know it's him. Barry, can you hear me? Are you up there yet? Can you hear me up there, Barry? Very faintly. Okay. Uh, Barry Campbell has reached the top of this flight of 22 steps. And uh, in just a moment, I'm going to give him the signal to demonstrate this remarkable talent for falling. Okay, Bear, any time. Barry Campbell has fallen the full 22 steps here, and he's now rolling over. Barry? Don't. I wonder if... Don't. Don't touch me. No, I know that. Don't. The first rule. Don't touch me. Get a doctor. Right. And uh, we'll check back. Stand back and let me get air. Will you let me out to the telephone, please? Sorry about this, folks. Well, hi again, everybody. Here at Bob and Ray's personality sketchbook, a person you haven't seen or heard from in a long time. And uh, naturally, we haven't either. Welcome back to our microphones, Wilbur Feely. Thank you very much, uh, Ray and Bob, and it's a pleasure to be here. Well, uh, you seem uh, very nervous, uh, Wilbur. Well, I've always been nervous. Uh, you may have remembered when I was in the bomb deactivating business, I was nervous. I understand. And I did that, of course, <laughs> just for... Uh, 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 just a second, this, uh, this jumping and, uh, and ducking your head and neck and pulling away uh, is... I never used to do that, did It's I? a reflex type of movement. Now, where did That's you ever right. get this... Uh, I this got it with habit? this new job that I have, working for the great Bolo. 
the great Bolo. Isn't he yeah. a, a clown who plays cartoons on TV? No. No, this is a fellow who has a knife-throwing act. Oh, and, uh... And, and I'm oh. the, uh... Target, target for mm-hmm. him. For he goodness sake. He feels it makes the act look better to have a live uh, person there. Well, why, uh... Why did you turn to this type of work? Uh... The insurance company beefed about my... Bomb deactivating. Bomb deactivating. Huh? And you... Said I should get into something safer. Yeah. You're making me nervous, right? Uh, well, do you think something safer is being a target for the great Bolo, who is known well, to be very erratic? It was the only thing I could do, Ray. Would you get me the uh, theater book encyclopedia, please? Because I want it. It seems to me that he has gone through five or six human targets since 1954. No, I don't want to. Huh? That's what he told me, yes. Uh-huh. And they all seem to. Uh, they all quit, did he say? He didn't say whether they quit or not. He just said that. They're not with him anymore. Not with the act anymore, he said. Uh, he uh, says. Don't do that, please, Wilbur. Well, uh, have you uh, told the insurance company that uh, you're with... No, I'm oh. on my way over to see them now. Oh, no. Now, to get the uh, new policy signed. Good. And well, I think uh, they'll be happy to know that I'm working again. Well, Wilbur, I don't know, but uh, I would say this. That the insurance company is going to be very, very unhappy with your new line of work. Uh... Seems to me. <laughs> well, I certainly, don't certainly hope not. Uh, I don't think they're going to think that this is one bit safer than deactivating bombs. What well, you do all we'll summer? just see about that. <laughs> what you do all summer? I work to the golf driving range, picking up golf balls out there. You know. Oh boy, Wilbur Feely in our personality sketchbook. <laughs> and and uh, what would you sign your name, Wilbur? Yes. Kind of shaky writing. Oh, I, don't know I could be. never make that out. I could never make out Wilbur Feely. Oh, no, no, no. So long, Wilbur. Goodbye. Hey, goodbye, Ray. Now it's time for a few uh, interviews here in the audience, and uh, we have a great group with us today. How about you, ma'am? You look as if you're quite <laughs> exuberant and yeah. giggly and happy. <laughs> I would like uh, to uh, ask... Ask us anything you want, because we're here to uh, allot this time to answer. Uh, I wonder... uh... (laughs) Oh, come on now. You'll have to uh, straighten up if you want to... (laughs) What is it you want to ask? I, uh... (laughs) Well, what is the matter with you, man? Well, I always get giggly in front of famous people, although I've never met anyone. (laughs) Well, uh, thanks for putting us into the famous category, but... Try to get a hold of yourself. We'll come back to you later. Just, anybody else have any uh, questions? Any? I do. All right. Uh, a friend of mine uh, really uh, sold me a bill of goods. Uh, he told me to buy a copy of your new book, Linda Lovely and the Flavors. Oh, yes, yes. And That's uh, not so new now. No. But I thought it was a real bomb. Uh-huh. Uh, now, what should I do about it? Have you it? tried uh, brooding about it, sir? No, I haven't. And have you ever tried reducing the swelling on a fat lip? No, but if uh, you want to wait around till after the show and see our complaint manager, Slugsy Swenson, I'm sure he'll be happy to make some sort of adjustment for you. I read it, Bob and Ray, that book he speaks of. Oh, he has? And I think it's an outstanding contribution to contemporary American literature. Thank you, sir. Your good taste is only exceeded by your plain appearance. Now, if that lady is, uh, (laughs) with the giggles, has composed herself, I'm... I will come back to you, uh, ma'am. Uh, Ray? Wait a minute. That gentleman back there has his hand up. Uh, Bob, would you stand up, sir? Uh, is it Bob or Ray who owns the vintage 1923 Bugatti convertible? It belongs to Webley Webster. Webley Webster, right. Our educational director. Well, is he here now? Sure, I am. Would you like me to tell you all about my Bugatti? No, I'd like to have you move it. It's triple parked and has the traffic on 49th Street backed up for four oh, blocks. Oh, I'm sorry, Alistair. I was in kind of a hurry. Well, you have to come along with me. I'd like to see your driver's license, too, mister. You call me Webb. Oh, that's too dark. bad about Webb. It's the fourth one this week. And I don't think there's enough time left uh, for that nice lady's question. So well. <laughs> we'll have to make it some other time, <laughs> man, I guess. Uh, what is, could you quickly ask us what... Uh, how much do you and Ray make a week? Uh, together or separately? <laughs> Both together. Well, it's none of your business, ma'am. And I see our time is up, so... Well, I need to have that information. See, I'm a lady estate planner, and I have a little policy uh-huh. here. Well, we're well taken care of. will enable you and Ray uh-huh. 
to retire at a very early age with an income that's considerable. Yeah. And it'll only cost a few dollars. A few dollars a week. Well, I think we're... You to sit down with me for yeah. Just, uh, I think our affairs are well hours. taken care of. I could explain in uh, simple terms. Oh, you got serious all of a sudden, ma'am, when you got well, to call of those giggles. Yes. Now, do you see this is our actuary yeah. table Well, can we take here. this up later? We've got to go back to... Uh, all right, would you come right back out? A new feature this week, Ray, one that uh, is very near and dear to our hearts, I'm sure, and we hope will be to folks listening in, and that is the time when we reunite old uh, friends, or in this particular case, two relatives who haven't seen each other for some time. This is a new feature, and uh, if it works out nicely uh, today, uh, then you can look forward to many more of these. Would you please, audience, give a great big round of applause for a lady from Encino, California, Miss Carmela Defarge. <laughs> Welcome, Miss Defarge. Thank you very much. Really a thrill to have you here and uh, to know that in just a little while we're going to surprise you with you a, are? a member of your family that you haven't seen for, well, pretty close to... 50 years, I think, 45 well, or so. Well, well, I arrived, uh, and I want to thank you for the bus ride. It well, was we, lovely. We wanted you to uh, have a good trip here, and we I'm hope still you'll... wearing this small baby orchid that uh-huh. was given to me as I left Encino by your man. Have there. your uh, accommodations at the Bob and Ray Hotel here in Big Town been uh, comfortable for you? Uh, so far, there's only the one blanket in the room. I don't know whether you know that or not. No, I it's didn't. A thin blanket. Time's a waste, Miss Carmela Defarge, and we want you now to meet for the first time in 45 years your elder brother from La Havre, France, Monsieur Yves Defarge. <laughs> Carmela, do you remember no. Eve's, uh... No, well, he's older than me. He must be 20 years older than me. Qu'est-ce qu'il dit? He said, uh, uh, what did you say? He evidently, he just speaks no uh, English. Is that, uh, where are our systems? Uh, did we get a translator? It's no, apparent have, this uh, gentleman, uh... We don't have any translator. Uh, I think he's... Uh, je ne vous uh, comprends. Je ne comprends. Don't you speak English, Eve? Uh, qu'est-ce qu'il dit? He said, know. do you speak English? I don't uh, know. Parlez-vous anglais? Mm. Oh, no, no. Mm. Well, well, anyway, mm. uh, how's the last four and a half decades been going for you? Je ne parle pas l'anglais. Well, this well, is I mean, rather uh, embarrassing for us after well, all I... of this expense. Mr. Defarge oh. was flown here first class on Plummet World Airlines. He was especially... flown first class? Yeah, well, he had to get here from La Havre, France. Well, I had to they... get here from California. Good he doesn't please. understand anything that's uh, going on. I came on a Conestoga wagon, practically. Well, I'm afraid that uh, we have made another well, Look, I'm going to run along. Mistake. So long, Eve. Uh, uh, Eve, if you'd uh, just go back to the station. The uh, yes, car is waiting for him to take him now right to International Airport. Wonderful. To return to him to his native to the Plummet uh, World Airlines Terminal. And uh, good luck to you, Eve Lafarge. And thanks for being here for this. I wonder, could that car take me over the bus? We'll we'll try to arrange that if you don't mind riding in the same car with your brother. I want to get back as quickly as possible. All right, thank you, Mr. Storm, too. again with the theme Old MacDonald Had a Farm, played on a recording by his wife. We present Dean Archer Armstead, head of the Lackawanna, New York Field Station and director of Bob and Ray Agriculture Products. Dean, what's the good word from Ms. Armstead? Well, uh, I'm here from a mutual friend. She's down the hill of Columbia, uh, riding around on a mule owned by some coffee farmer down there. Oh, that's all. She's really traveling around. uh, She had the nerve to write to me just about ten days ago all the while. Uh, at the field station for money. For money? Uh, uh, from you? Uh, for, uh, don't get a nickel out of me. I'd well, just turn the light on and better poison Ivy. I, I wouldn't understand. give her a nickel. Well, Dean, let's not go into your personal problems here. You uh, you're going to present some sort of an experiment uh, that you've been working on at the field station, is that uh, right? Yes, uh, we've discovered at the field station, Bob, that uh, 
chickens respond to, to authority. By that, they can take, uh, for, uh, take orders, orders, you mean? Uh, orders, yes, and uh, uh, it helps. Uh, you wouldn't say, uh, well, see, there are the vulture family, Bob. They uh, need discipline. Yes, They're vultures at heart. What are we going to see in, and hear in the way of chicken commands? I have a tape recording. A tape that, recording, uh, yes. That uh, we're going to hear. Uh, we use uh, Charlie Hassably Reed. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, he's a former uh, sergeant in the armor. Oh, a drill instructor, kind of. Uh, Does he I'm, use uh, foul language on these chickens? <laughs> no, he's uh... a... <laughs> I didn't know that you cried uh-huh. jokes, Bob and Ray. Uh-huh. No, uh, but you will see just how he controls these chickens and how he gets more eggs. All right, can we see this demonstration as Drill Sergeant Charlie Hassabibi from inside the chicken house gives the orders to these chickens? Fall in, fall in, let's go. All the fowl and coupe, line up. With the guide, hold up his wings so the others can fall in beside him. Okay, fall in, let's go. Well, this is amazing. Right. They're standing at attention, that line. Okay, pretty ready? much at attention. Quack, okay. Eddie. Now listen, chickens, when I give you the command, you're to jump up into the nest that you'll see uh, right in back of you and lay eggs uh, at the count of one, two, three, four. Is that clear? Any questions in there? Now, prepare to jump into nests. Jump. chicken outfit to me. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, I had no idea that you were a comedian. Well, actually, how is the military technique working out at the field station? Well, we've point? found it's not working too well. It's still experimental, as you know. Uh, you see, you get one bad and really quicken, and he can ruin a whole outfit, a whole flock. They become a, an undisciplined mob. Well, Dean, I'm terribly sorry. Boy, I hope she falls off that mule. You have been listening to the director of Bob and Ray Agriculture, Dean Archer Armstead head of the Lackawanna, New York Field Station. Wally Ballou is stationed at one of New York's newest and most complete canine headquarters. It's called Matarama. Come in, please, Wally Ballou. Wally Ballou from the Swank Matarama located on New York's Park Avenue and chatting with the founder of this unusual institution, which gives complete dog service from A to Z, Mr. Hiram Henslinger. Hiram, if I may call you that, we're standing right now, I understand, in uh, the canine clothing and jewelry department. That's you... right, uh, Mr. Below. Here you can spend uh, anything from a few cents up to several hundred dollars on uh, collars for your dog and uh, dog coats and gowns. Really amazing. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see, lovely imported silks for the girl dogs. We have some conservative uh, tweed coats for the males. Uh, we have uh, shoes here uh, made by, a, I won't mention his name, a no, prominent uh, boot maker. Uh-huh. Uh, the fabrics range all the way from the drip dries up to vacunuses. And uh, uh, they're all designed exclusively for us by the famous Izzy of Paris. Yes, and I was noticing particularly these rain booties that you have for the keep the doggies' feet dry. Uh, yes. They're lined in cashmere, aren't they, for yes, winter? Yes, that's right. They're winter booties because uh, dogs don't like to get their feet wet any more than, uh, than you do, Mr. Balloon. And, of course, this dog perfume that uh, seems to be quite uh, popular, lap pole number five. Uh, this is the beauty parlor we're stepping into now, Department 2. What goes on here, Harry? Well, we have... Uh, in hire a th- brother. That's all right. Uh, we have here, beside the clipping, we have a um, staff of plastic surgeons who can do uh, nose bobs and uh, ear jobs, tail jobs. Well, what's the uh, newest thing in dog hairdos, Hiram? Uh, your poodle cut is the most popular right now. Uh-huh. I thought the uh, poodle cut was always popular. Well, uh, never on Irish setters or uh, Airedales or Cocker Spaniels or English Sheepdogs. They oh, were at How about the wire-haired terriers? Can't do much with that. You can't do much with it. Uh-huh. Iron well, it. 
One of the most amazing features of Monorama is the breeding kennel. We've developed a new breed for people who want a watchdog with a good loud, vicious bark, but do not want such a big animal around the house. Now, most of your smaller breeds have a bark that uh, wouldn't frighten uh, a bunny rabbit. Uh-huh. We've developed a miniature dog with a big, spooky bark. Would you bring uh, Brutus out, please? Yes, I will, Harold. Uh, here he comes. Do you like him? Hey, yes. He looks like a Pekingese, ladies and gentlemen. He's about eight inches high. Uh, strictly a lap dog type. Can you get him to bark for us so we can uh, hear him? Uh, yes. Uh, bark? Make him bark, will you, Luther? Wow. Well, that's really a uh, big dog lightning power and compact dog economy and convenience. Uh, yeah. Hiram. I'm sorry we don't have time right now to visit the canine furniture department, but I understand they sell everything from doggy four-poster beds to tiny kitchen sets. However, we will return a little later to attend the session of the Monorama Dog Obedience School, so stay tuned. Uh, come on up on the fifth floor, Mr. Ballou, uh, up to our cafeteria. I'll treat you to a bite to eat. Wonderful. Makes its own gravy. Well, time now to return to Matarama on Park Avenue and Wally Ballou. Matarama, again, speaking with Hiram Hensinger, who is the founder of this uh, dog institution. We had a delicious uh, meal a, a while ago, Hiram. I do want to thank you for that. Glad you enjoyed it. And now we're about to listen to one of America's leading canine educationalists, Professor Yvette Chatter, teaching a class of dog owners and their dogs obedience cabal. Well, the white French poodle with the show cut, please sit down. You talking to me, Teach? Well, are you the white French poodle, or aren't you? I'm uh, Mr. Wilberforce. My dog's name is H. Well, sit down, anyway. Okay. All right. Will the German shepherd come out, please, in the center of the room now? Yeah, boys. All right. Yes, right. Now, you all notice how he came right out with the dog, with the... Will the black Scotty dog come out? Good, Mom. All right, I will. Now, the Mexican Chihuahua. See? And uh, the Great Dane sit down. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. All right, now, the English Bulldog come out, please. Now, just a moment. Let the German Shepherd return, the Mexican Chihuahua go back, and would the Afghan Hound come out? That's it. Good boy. Sit. Sit. Stay. Sit. 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 Will the boxer... Will the boxer please come out? Can you tell us what you're doing right now, Miss Shatner? Our time is running a little bit short, I'm afraid. Uh, what uh, command should I give for my uh, St. Bernard when he goes for somebody? To tell him to drop dead. I'm quitting this. I've never worked with a group of... Stupid people like this. Well, this Mr. is the uh, dumbest class of dogs I've ever had. Miss Shatner seems to have an unruly class here. So oh, oh, as uh, a bit of bedlam what? against the crazy. Oh, 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 we turn down, boy. We're turning it to my dog off his ankle. <laughs> to some more folks who are passing by on tour of our Bob and Ray studio. How about you, sir? Would you like to chat with us for a minute or two? No, he's signaling that he'd rather not. Uh, let your wife know, huh? Uh, how about this man over here? Thank you, Rogan. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, notice there. What? He's handcuffed to the other fellow. Uh, you, sir, I yes. wonder could we uh, just chat for a minute or two? This is our kind of... Uh, are you on the air? ...good neighbor time. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, sure. I'd be delighted. What do you like best about New York City? Oh, I guess uh, the part I like best is uh, there are hundreds of ways of getting out of New York. I mean, oh. you can go across the uh, br- uh, George Washington Bridge or the uh, 59th Street Bridge. You go yes. through tunnels, trains, airplane. You can go north up through uh, uh, the Bronx, Yonkers, White Plains, out yes. there with Mount Vernon. Of course. You can go over to Staten Island. You can go out through the Narrows. 
You can uh, order the highway. Oh, I've heard there are some 20 or 22 bridges that uh, Manhattan is uh, connected to, to other places by. Right. Well, something like that. Uh, which oh. one would you take by choice to get out of the city? Helicopter. Mm-hmm. That would be the quickest to be <laughs> uh, Do you plan to be here long, or are you just... Uh... I'm going to be here, the judge told me, for at least 10 to 15 years. Uh-huh. Uh, would you care to give us your name? I suppose you would. I'd rather those, not. Uh, conditions. No. I hope your stay is a pleasant one. I think you'll enjoy Funny it. Funny how uh... you had us wrong. You thought he was the cop, didn't you? That's right. Or you thought I was the cop. I thought you were, yeah. and uh, that he was... Uh, you can't person. tell by looks. No, I guess no. not. Do you have any plans for escape on the way up uh, the river? I have a couple, yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't want to talk about it now because uh, Big Ears is listening, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I... He doesn't... Well, I enjoy your program, or I did. I used to a lot. Well, I hope you still will be able to. I hear they have radios there. Uh-huh. And the food is uh, perfectly excellent. Makes its own gravy, I hear. So, uh, sir, if, when you uh, do get out, if you'd uh, come and look us up, we'll try to put all of our resources together and help you uh, to get back and rehabilitate. Bob and Ray, you'll be pretty old bucks by the time I come back here. See ya. (laughs) Okay, sir, and on that happy note, that concludes our tour uh, interviews for today. Back inside the Central Control Bureau Headquarters National. Now, for the next few minutes, if we may, uh, we'd like to answer some of the letters that have come in to us in the past week. I think uh, this letter that comes from California probably is the most pressing one uh, of the moment. Uh, they're wondering if uh, we could uh, come out there. There's a get-together of a group of, uh, of uh, a club of some sort. Yes. They would like to know if we could come out and spend a weekend with them. It's one of our old organizations. It's the uh, Hedgehog Association of uh, Southern Hello, California. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't oh, it's all right. On the air. I don't know if uh, folks have ever met you before. This is Herb, or Herbert, as his mother calls him. Uh, he's our helper. That's all right. We, uh, did you see any of the other mail? There's only three or four pieces here. Well, there's a whole bit down on your desk. Yeah. Or, or if the lobby, you can go get it. Ah, uh, well, uh, no, I, I don't. By the time you go down and come back, Herb. Well, it takes a minute. All right. Uh, Go ahead, if you can do it before yeah. we get off here. Right. Well, well uh, if you folks are listening out there in uh, in California, no, we can't because uh, that uh, date, that one weekend, uh, there's a conflict here because uh, uh, Bob's going to get a haircut that weekend. And I, oh, uh, yeah. There it is. So I have a pile, pile of it. Boy, you get back here real fast. How'd you do it so quickly, Herb? Herb it? It's okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Herb has been with us a little less than a month now, and uh, believe me, this... I just, I just, I just ran down and, and ran back up again with it. <laughs> He's been with us, uh... Just sit down, uh, <laughs> you feel better, Herb? Less than a month. No, I'm, Here's I'm, a fellow who gets things done. What's uh, new and exciting? I see, uh... I saw a fellow pretty near get uh, hit by a truck when I was coming in. Really? Where about Ooh, the... just missed him by that much. Three feet, huh? Ooh. Everybody yelled at him when he got out of the way. Bob, I wonder if you could put your haircut off to another uh, weekend. What weekend was that, Ray? So it was next uh, August. Next August. Well, I could uh, have it maybe in September or get it in July. I don't... Really, it doesn't make that much difference to me. Uh, look around. Let me see if you'll need a haircut by then. Who, me? Yeah, you too, Herb. Well, you, you'll need one, uh, Herb. I don't have as much... Where energy. do you get your haircut, Herb? 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 Oh, Herb. Huh? Herb? We did uh, that, Jake. Where do you get your haircut? For the sleep. Minute. I wonder, could you run downstairs and see if... I just ran down and uh, brought it right back up. No, I know you did, but I'm talking about something else now, about the car and the parking lot. Oh, we missed him by that much. Everybody yelled at him, and but he got out of the way, all right. Do you know, uh, do you know what kind of a car I have, Herbert? No, but I can find it if you tell me where it is. It's a blue one, and it's down on 6th Avenue. I wonder if you'd run down and, uh, and put a nickel in it. Sure thing, right? Yeah, he's probably really one of the most helpful people uh, we have, and trustworthy is uh, the best word I can think of for Herbert. He really gets things done, and uh, he's fun to be with, as you can all see and understand. You could make it. Oh. Oh, okay. It's but towed away? Huh? Was it towed away? It's towed away, but it's, I put the money in just the same. Just as they pulled it away? This is by that much. Thank you, Herbert. Our new helper. <laughs> 